Oh, here we go. Here's a, here's a recent one. I had a client email us with a complaint recently, and I had a choice to make because he should have sent it to the support email. He sent it to my personal email. So I could have either... Running a cold email campaign is one of the easiest ways, one of the most straightforward ways I've found to get new clients. We've used it to match with most of the Fortune 500 for our agency clients and a lot of billion dollar brands we've been able to sell. We've generated millions of dollars of revenue just from cold email. The problem is if you've tried cold email, it's not as straightforward and as easy as it looks. But luckily we have put together the cold email optimization checklist and you can have it for free. What this is, is the internal tool we use to optimize our cold email campaigns. This checklist will teach you or your team when to rewrite the subject line, when to rewrite the body of the email, what to put in the body of the email, how to check the email to make sure there's no errors before the send goes out. All of that in a very straightforward checklist and you can have it for free. To get it, go over to experiment27.com slash checklist and you can have that download. Again, the URL is experiment27.com slash checklist. On this channel, I talk a lot about how to sell, how to be a better entrepreneur, how to make money, all this sort of stuff. But one thing I haven't really touched on too much is business ethics and communication. So let's talk about it in this video, stick around. Let's start with the basics. What are business ethics? It means doing the right thing consistently, even though in the short term you might not have to. It means not stealing from clients, not lying to clients. <laughs> really, it, it also means like not over promising and under delivering. It means sticking true to your word, doing the things you say you're gonna do, not acting like a shysty con man, as tempting as it is, et cetera. Just being a good person. That's what business ethics are all about, being a good person in a business context. And I wanted to talk about ethics when it comes to communication because I've had a couple different times where not communicating something to one of my clients or even one of my co-founders has led to disaster. Business is blowing up, business is falling apart. Recently, I had a business partner, let's say four or five months ago, where we were working on a project together, things were going really well, and I was doing all my work, but I decided to take a vacation, you know, take it easy for a week. As is my right, you know, as a business owner, the problem was communication. So I didn't tell my business partner that I was going to be working less that week. If I had told him, he would have said, okay, yeah, cool. Unfortunately, since I didn't say that, what he was left doing is wondering why I wasn't working as much as I was the week before and thought that that was the way that it was always going to be. And so he bailed, you know, his loss, obviously, but that was also my fault because of communication. So you can do whatever you want, but you need to communicate what you're going to do and set expectations correctly first, because my other business partner, longtime partner, Robert Indresh, I was going on vacation doing the same thing again. And I learned from my past mistakes. I said, Hey Robert, I'm going to an area where there's not going to be a lot of internet. So if we are going to work, I'm going to do it in batches and I'm just going to communicate like that. And he said, all good. And that's that no issues from that moment forward. All you need to do is communicate. The same goes for client work. That was just co-founders, right? Business ethics when it comes to co-founders. The same goes for clients. Clients get more angry when you make a mistake and don't tell them than when you just make a mistake one time. All right, I'm really dredging up all of my ethical mistakes here, so I hope you're down. One time we had a client that was waiting for me to come on site for a meeting. So they were like, Alex, when are you gonna come out to our city to meet? And I had made a mistake like two, three weeks before I responded to the email, but sometimes Gmail will glitch if you don't look at it and just respond to yourself. So I had sent them dates to when I wanted to meet, but I had responded to myself. So that was two, three weeks ago. And I'd been telling them this whole time that, yeah, I sent you the dates. I sent you the dates. It's in your inbox. And I thought it was, but then my ethical mistake was when they found out that it wasn't in the inbox, I was too embarrassed to tell them that I had responded to the wrong email. So I doubled down, I lied, and it led to us losing the client. All I had to do was say, hey, yeah, I screwed up. I did send the dates, but I accidentally responded to myself and didn't check. And guess what? They might still be a client. Or if we lost a client, at least I wouldn't feel like I did an ethical violation there, you know? Because once you lie to somebody, it's very, very hard to rebuild that trust. And that is why I try to be honest. I try as hard as possible to be honest in every single thing because it's hard to lie. It really is hard to lie and it's hard to 
keep track of lies once you start telling them. And if you're honest in your communication, you can make mistakes and you can underperform and you can fix it. What people like to see from their freelancers and from the agencies that they hire and from the businesses they work with, sure, they would ideally love success every single time, but if they hire you and you set expectations correctly and they're hiring you more like a partner than like some person who's gonna go deliver, what they'd rather see is you saying something like, okay, this month we tried a cold email campaign to the retail market, we sent 200 cold emails, and as you can see here, the open rate was 60%, so people are actually opening the emails, but our response rate was not very good at all. So what we're gonna do this month is rewrite the bodies of the emails, we're gonna try again, and we're gonna make this work. Because all they wanna know is that you're working and that you're doing what you said you're gonna do. The wrong way to go about that would be something like sending 200 cold emails, having the campaign fail in the first month, hiding that from the client, sending two to 500 other cold emails, trying to test and trying to scramble to see if that works. Now I do still recommend you do something like that, but be open and honest, and the client will actually appreciate if you say something like, all right, this month we sent the 200 cold emails, it wasn't really working, so we sent another 300 cold emails to a different niche, we tested a couple other things, none of that's working either, so here's our plan going forward for the next month. That is worth so much more to a client than you lying or not being open about the process. All you need to do to be ethical is be honest and communicate what's going on. And if you can do that, You've got this down, you're an ethical person. The other thing that works for me is try to do the right thing in the moment. Because all you really have is the present moment. So let's say you have the chance to steal from your company. Don't do it. That's all, there, you're ethical. Even one time, right? Because it's easy to justify a one-time unethical decision, a lie, uh, thievery, uh, cutting of the corners. It's easy to justify a one-time decision, and what I found is, once you start justifying these decisions, it's harder to see the pattern, and that's when huge unethical breaches happen, is it's not just one guy deciding one day to like do a Bernie Madoff type of scheme. It is a stacking of unethical decisions, small unethical decisions, over a long period of time that leads to the tremendous theft and the cons and all this stuff. So if you can stay in the moment and decide every single time there's an opportunity to do the right thing, you'll be good to go. Oh, here we go, here's a, here's a recent one. I had a client email us with a complaint recently and I had a choice to make because he should have sent it to the support email, he sent it to my personal email. So I could have either deleted the email and forgot about it, because why is he emailing me? You know, he should be emailing support. Or I could do the ethical thing, the right thing, and forward it to support who will deal with it. And I know that sounds so simple, but I could either delete the email or forward the email I decided to forward the email, the problem got dealt with. Had I deleted the email and that client was uncommunicated to for a couple weeks, the problem wouldn't have been solved and it might have led to a refund or it might have led to a blow up. So that's a good example of making the right decision in the moment. And just keep in mind, it's easy to justify these unethical decisions and it's hard to find, especially if you don't have a lot of self-awareness, it's hard to find out what you're even doing when it comes to major ethical breaches. And if you want a good example of how these ethical breaches stack up, there's a movie called The Polka King, which is Jack Black, and he plays this guy, Jan Levon, who's the master of polka. But what the movie shows, step by step by step, is a guy who's doing little unethical decisions, and over time it leads to him becoming a massive con man, and he ends up going to jail. So over time, these decisions do stack up. Keep your business ethics in line, communicate hard, and that's all we can ask for, right? I'm not gonna say, and nothing's gonna go wrong for you. You're still gonna get clients mad at you, but at least you're putting good energy out in the universe and it might come back to you. By the way, if you want the system that we're covering in this video as a free checklist, grab the link in the description. You can have a PDF of everything we talked about. Thanks for watching the video. We do content like this three times a week. And also check out our back catalog. We do a lot of sales and marketing and motivation content talking about how to grow your company. Leave a comment down below. What was your worst ethical violation and how did you solve it or did you not solve it? I would actually love advice on this too. Do you have better advice than what I just gave in this video? <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Like this video to encourage this type of content on YouTube, subscribe for more. And if you wanna grow your company, you wanna book meetings with billion dollar brands, check out our course, Email 10K. Thanks for watching, I'm Alex Berman.